Hey guys, I'm going to go over your cordage or rope kit for your kit today and also how to make it to where your stuff isn't all tangled up. Okay, um, this is a mess, okay, total mess, but there's a way that you can put it together that where you can just pull it out and it won't tangle. And I wanted to show you guys that. First of all, you need several different lengths of rope for your kit. Okay, you're gonna need some shorter pieces and some longer pieces. Uh, you know, everybody goes 550 pair cord, and that's fine. Um, but I also have what's called mule tape. This is 1,200 pound test right here. And yes, it's easier to see from a distance, but it is really, really tough, okay? It's real durable, uh, it's very slippery, so it doesn't, it doesn't uh, snag on us near as much stuff. Um, so, yeah. This, this is a good thing. It's called mule tape. Okay, and I've got some older stuff. I've had this piece of mule tape right here well over 10 years, probably closer to 15. I used I just left it in the back of the truck. It would get rained on and everything. It just get left in the back of the truck because I always needed to tie something in or what have you. So I always just threw this in the back of the truck and left it there. Nobody was going to steal it, um, but it has lasted for years, literally for years. Uh, it's really really good stuff and no you can't make fishing line out of it or anything like that but you know see here's one place where it almost wore in two from rubbing on something but back to the uh, let's how to tie your cordage to where it doesn't get tangled up when you go to use it okay you've got you can do this a couple of ways you got a hand right um, you can do like this and just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you get it all wound up. Just figure eight it around both fingers. Your hand will get tired if it's a long piece of if, if, if it's a long piece of cord. But this is one way to do it, and I'll show you another way too. Especially for bigger, fatter rope that you can't use on your hand like this. Okay, when you get to the end, just take grab it around the middle. Okay, grab it around the middle. Take the end that you just finished with, wrap it around there two or three times, and just kind of do a little have a bit of a half hitch, just kind of tie it off. All right? You don't want to necessarily a, a hard knot, but uh, just kind of tie it off. Now, you've got your rope. Now this is the piece that you started with that was draped over your hand. Now watch. It just comes right out. It doesn't tangle, it doesn't knot up, it's just boom, done. That's how easy that is. I'll show you one more time. You hook it with this part towards your wrist, okay? Okay, and then you go around your thumb on the outside and then around your pinky and just figure eight it. Okay, that's all you gotta do, figure eight. Makes your rope super easy to get to. Like if you're trying, let's say you're, you're freezing wet, you was crossing the creek, it's SHTF, and you got wet, and you need to get a shelter up, all right? Who, do you need to spend 30 minutes untangling your rope? No. You want to get to your rope now and get your shelter up, or you might risk something like hypothermia. So um, just figure eight it. Back and forth, and I'm done. Okay, now take the end that I finished with, and just wrap it around two, three, four times, however much end you got. Uh, you don't want to let leave it too short. You can always take a couple of extra wraps and it'll be just fine. And then just tie it off and you're done with that. Now, another way you can do this, and you're gonna have to use your imagination for this. I ducked my shovel out here. Pretend this is a two by four or a one by four or something like that, or a one by two, anything. And you drive a nail in one end, like one of those big tall barn nails. And you drive a nail in this end, okay? So you've got a flat piece with two nails sticking up. You do the same thing, you just figure eight it. And uh, when you're done, take the end that you finished with and tie it around the middle, okay? To uh, tie it off so that it makes it usable. All right, now I'm gonna do all of these uh, here in just a minute because I'm tired of them being messed up. Um, I have a whole milk crate full of rope. And uh, in your cordage kit, you're gonna need to have several things. You need rope, of course, you need some rope. This is probably about a 15, 20 foot section. Uh, this one's, I think, 25 foot. Might be 50 foot, I don't know. But I got a lot of rope. 
Rope is your friend, okay? You need rope for everything if you're bugging out. If you're bugging in, or if you're at your retreat location, you're probably still gonna need a lot of rope to do different things. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to make a clothesline, if nothing else, to hang your clothes. You're gonna have to uh, be able to, if you're bugging out, you're gonna have to be able to get your pack and tie it up off the ground, okay? Make your ridge line, uh, stake, your uh, stake your tent down. Uh, you might have to cut little pieces off it and make loops for the ends of your tarp so you don't have to, you know, constantly argue with your tarp to get it set up. Okay, or your rain fly, or your, your tent pegs, whatever the case may be, okay? Uh, you need rope, and you should have, and this stuff, stuff really doesn't weigh that much. It does not. It's really, really light. So you'll be able to, yeah, I had this one tied, but I'm gonna retie it. See how, even after it's just thrown around, it just comes loose. This is just falling out of my hand. Okay, I'm not doing anything fancy. It's done, and it's not tangled, okay? Um, I'm just going to rewind it while I'm talking. You got to have rope for all kinds of things, okay? Uh, especially if you're bugging out. There is there is a million and one uses for this stuff. Everybody should have a cordage kit in their kit, okay? And in your cordage kit, I suggest you put some uh, bank line, tarred bank line. Uh, I don't know. I got the stuff from Walmart. I don't know if it's near as good as the other stuff. Uh, I do know that David Canterbury says that sells it on his website, and he's not super pricey. So, but some, uh, I think it's thirty six number thirty six bank line. Uh, I think that's what he said it was number thirty six bank line. Um, but anyway, you can make trot lines, all right, so that you can um, fish. You want things to you want things like that to work for you when you're doing other things. Okay, so you set out fishing lines, and you walk away from them. And go do something else and that way it uh, it works for you when you're not having to sit there and babysit it because you know that's one way to put out food put out food uh, procure food god I can't talk today can I um, <laughs> you might want to consider a couple of bungee bungee cords okay these I got these at Harbor Freight they're cheap now keep in mind this elastic will go bad after a while and pretty soon it won't be any good you'll still have the hook though and the hook can be used for different things. Um, in your kit, you probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a couple of S hooks, okay? Now this one's covered in uh, like a rubberized coating. I've got, they've got stainless steel ones, okay? You can get stainless steel ones or coated ones, whatever you want. You can paint them if you don't want them to be uh, visible very far. You know, the stainless steel one might be a little shiny Blue is easier to pick up in the, in, in, a, in, in the woods. You know, you can see it farther. Uh, dark blue, not near as bad, but um, you might want to consider something like some S-hooks to go in with your cordage. Remember I told you, I showed you those cord lock things um, that paracord goes into, and then you can pull it tight on your, uh, on your ridge line. That does not mean that you shouldn't learn how to tie knots. Okay. You should learn how to dye all different types of knots uh, so that you will be able to do this without gadgets. Uh, but I use the gadgets because they're easier. I know how to tie the knots, but I, I'd rather just get it done. So uh, I use the gadgets. Um, you know, have a bunch of little short pieces. Okay, this is just little cotton stuff. You, use this, you can use this for tinder if you wanted. Uh, you can use it to tie something onto your pack. You can use it for just about anything. Okay, uh, anything at all that might make your life easier in a bug out situation. Um, what else? In the same vein as cordage, like I said before, you're going to want some shoelaces. Okay, because you don't want to get now. This is a nice long lace. This is a good lace. Um, I have some shorter ones in that one repair kit, but I've also got a couple of longer ones in my cordage container. Uh, you're going to want to be able to fix your boot laces. Okay, These are super cheap. They can also be used for other things if you've got brand new boot laces on your boots. Okay, Another thing that you may not think of as far as cordage, uh, but this could save your life, is let's say hypothetically you are going to go run a little trap line. You're going to put out 15 snares for 
squirrels, okay? And you're going through the woods. How do you get back to your camp? Okay. How do you know which way you need to go? Because sometimes the woods look all look the same. Uh, the gray-bearded green beret, he even got lost for six hours once just going to get water. Okay, uh, Lost his way back. Couldn't find his way back for six hours to his camp. All of his other army buddies were there waiting on him. Um, and if a green beret can do that, anybody can do it. So this is a super cheap, super cheap prep that can save your life. Now, you, you, don't, you, you know, you're not going to leave them up. Uh, unless you know you think that nobody else is going to follow them to you, but it's this marking stuff. This is like a plastic. Uh, they use it to to mark property lines, trails, things like that, and it's bright colored so you can see it. it you can tear it. Okay, um, you can tie it around a limb. You know, just take a piece, tie it around a limb, and you've got some sort of marker to get back with. Uh, you know, let's say you go run your trap line and you've gathered them all up, gather these up too, because they can reuse them. Just don't tie them so tight you can't get them off, okay? Uh, this is like safety tape or whatever it's called. It's made by Res uh, Presco, P-R-E-S-C-O. They carry it at Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. Um, this is a good thing to have in your kit. Now I've got this, you know, pretty full roll. I'm gonna actually take some of it off. I'm not gonna have quite this much in there. I just pulled this out because I happened to see it and I thought, aha, you guys need to know about this. So, you know, have some, have some trail marking tape, okay? You can take and wrap it around a thimble or, you know, a pencil or anything like that and just take a little piece of tape, like a piece of scotch tape and put it over the top of it so it doesn't unroll in your pack, okay? Um, so you, you're going to need to have something where you for sure won't get lost because everybody says, oh, I won't get lost. Really? If a green beret can get lost, I can, I can get lost. And if he can get lost, and he's a pretty sharp dude, you can get lost. Now, let's go a little bit of into the being lost part. I know it's not part of the cordage kit, but since it's here, I might as well mention it. Most places in the world, in the United States, I mean, rephrase that. Most places in the United States, you really can't get too lost. Uh, say some places up in the Rocky Mountains, maybe or up in Canada. But the fact of the matter is, most of the time to get unlost, just go downhill. It's that simple. Um, you will eventually, if you follow it downhill far enough, see lights of some house at night. Okay. Now this is not an SHTF situation. This is just generally if you're lost. Okay. Um, you go up in the mountains in Arizona. They're they're big, huge mountains, right? People get lost up in there all the time when they shouldn't. All they have to do is go downhill. That's it. Uh, when you get at nighttime, get on the top of the, the closest mountain around you and look around. You'll see lights, and take and make an arrow in the dirt with a uh, with rocks or sticks or something. Not not necessarily draw it because what if it rains and washes it away? But you know, <coughs> that's that way. Come daylight, you say, oh, I got to go that way. Okay. Now most everybody goes into. Uh, uh, compasses and things like that. Well, that's fine. But, you know, the sun comes up in the east and it sets in the west. So, if you don't have a compass, that's a good way to get your general bearings. East and west. Because once you know where east and west is, you know where north and south is. Okay, This isn't brain surgery. So, uh, that doesn't mean that, that during the middle of the day when the sun's straight up that you might not have to take a siesta underneath a underneath a bush somewhere, which wouldn't be a bad idea anyway, especially if it's hot, uh, to get in the shade and not exert yourself in the hottest part of the day. I, I have been around mostly desert areas my life, okay? For the, for the big part of my life, I was out in Arizona, New Mexico, uh, places like that, and, and I know more about the desert stuff than the eastern woodlands or up north in the big Rocky Mountains. So all my experience is coming from that. But in, like in Arizona, anywhere, New Mexico, just go downhill, okay? You'll eventually hit a road. You know, you go downhill till you hit a creek. Follow the creek downhill till it hits another creek. Follow that creek downhill until you finally get to a road of some sort because eventually that creek will either turn into a river or a road. You'll be able to find something. It's just, just a pro tip there. Uh, most, a lot of people worry about that needlessly. 
uh, if there's not a grid down EMP shut every light off in the entire world situation going on most of the place, times you can see lights of houses or cars uh, you can see the glow of cities if you're up in the mountains and you look around and you know that there's a big city over there you'll see the glow from the city you know that's the direction of the city so that might be the way you want to go but if you know where the direction of the city is you'll have your bearings okay I'm northeast of the city what was close to you know okay fine there's a there was a there was a highway that run north from the city and I know that I was to the west of it so if I go east I'll hit that highway Okay. It's just a matter of stopping and thinking. Uh, you, this, this, this is your brain. This is a supercomputer that we get for free, and that's I'm quoting that from uh, Survival Prepping from Normal People. Uh, Y'all go check out his channel. He is freaking awesome. Survival Prepping for Normal People is the guy, and he's awesome. Um, anyway, he says everybody gets a supercomputer for free. They just don't choose to use it sometimes. Um, so remember what I said about tying the... The, uh, the cordage, all right, so it pulls out. Make your life a lot easier if you're camping or hiking or backpacking or bugging out or bugging in or whatever the case may be. If your stuff isn't a tangled up mess, okay, you're gonna be better off. So you'll definitely want to learn how to tie your stuff. Now, you know, this one here was tied in a hurry. I just tied it in a loop. I just looped it like a garden hose or a, or a lariat rope and, and then just tied it. And it's going to tangle. The minute I untie it and try to pull it out, it's going to tangle. Uh, this one was already tangled because I didn't tie it back. So, if you want to keep your stuff neat and tidy, do it like I told you. You can get a piece of, you can get a board, put a nail up on either end, and then just figure eight it around the board. You know? And then tie it in the middle. And you can do that with any rope, even the big thick rope. Um, you can take you know, um, two twigs, shove them in the ground and do it on the twigs. You don't have to have a board. Uh, just anything that you can figure eight it around will work. And that way when you tie your stuff up and you put it back in your little bag, of course I'm using a crown royal bag, but you know, my, my rope goes in this because it's soft and it'll mold in my pack. Okay. Um, you know, you definitely want to have your cordage. It's one of the five C's and the 10 C's and the 50,000 C's or however many C's there are. Uh, you gotta have cordage. If you're bugging out or if you're, uh, or, or, or if you're camping or backpacking, anything, you don't wanna have to make cordage, okay? First of all, commercially made cordage is stronger, okay? It's easier to use. It ties easier, it bends and flex easier. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't make natural cordage. You need to learn how to do that. Um, then uh, you can, you know, save your stuff. It's not as hard as you think to make natural cordage. Uh, the, I saw a video the other day, because everybody was like the double reverse wrap thingy and whatnot. Well, that's fine, but there's a faster way to do it. Okay. And I saw it done. It was, um, she was making sandals. She was uh, a Native American making sandals. Okay. And uh, anyway, what she did is she uh, took the, the strands of whatever fiber plant she got it out of, which I think was the narrow leaf agave, um, and she just did a, a quick little fast just to hold them, okay? She laid them on her leg. It's hard to show. She laid them on her leg. Like, the, say these are bundles of strands, okay? She laid them on her leg. I don't have to do this on my tummy, see? And she rolled them, and then she let this go. See how that just wound up into rope? Okay. Might take a little practice to get this done, but she just she just laid them separate out from each other, and they rolled the same way. And she just rolled them and rolled them, and then she'd let go of the one end, and it would make rope. And then she would take it back up, and she would roll it, and then let it go, and it made rope. See how nice that is? easy 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 to make rope but in a shift excuse me an shtf situation you may not want to mess with this right away so have some commercially made cordage with you you can make rope later if you want um, it's not too tough when i get out to do the, start my camping when i get a vehicle um, i'll actually make some for you okay and i'll show you how it's done 
This was just a quick down and dirty. You just take it, like, pretend this is a bunch of little fine strands. Wool, hair, fine strands off of a plant, flax plant, whatever. Um, just, you know, all those, anything that has a fiber in it can be made into cordage. Now, some cordage is better than others, but <clears throat> you can make you can make cordage really easy. Uh, you just have to work smarter, not harder. Okay, sitting here and doing this and then twisting it and doing that and then moving it and doing that and then doing that. Yeah, it'll make it, it, it you can make cordage that way, okay? Absolutely, you can make cordage that way. But that's not necessarily the easiest way to make cordage. So, you saw how easy it was for me to get a nice twist. Yeah, I would be doing this on my leg, it's a lot easier. Whoops, I didn't separate them. You have to separate them. And then you get the twist. Okay? So, you start with the half, lay them, you know, apart from each other, like three or four inches, kind of up high on your thigh, and then you twist, you just roll it down your leg, okay? Until they get close to each other, and then let go with the one hand, and it's twisted around itself. So, it take a little practice to do that, but it's not that hard to learn. It's super easy, and it's easier than doing this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Your hands are gonna get exhausted. Okay? And if you're trying to make a pair of survival sandals or cordage to tie up your tarp because whatever, uh, a raccoon took off with all your rope, whatever the case may be. Um, oh, and you do have to watch about thieving little animals too. They will steal your stuff. So, pro tip. Uh, anyway, it's gone on long enough. Uh, definitely you want to have your cordage. Thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, check out my links down below, and y'all come back and see me.